In this video lesson, we're going to talk about the heel-toe technique. So before we get into the actual technique as it's played on the pedal, I first wanted to break it down for you on the carpet. And I even want to go one step further and I want to take off our shoes. All right? Okay, so you can do this with me. This might be good to do it with me right now. Take off your right shoe or whatever your dominant foot shoe is. Uh, okay, so now we got our foot on the ground, just set like that. Now I want to show you the motion that the heel-toe technique is. And this is it. Okay, so let's just break down exactly what is happening here. Um, like I'm always going to say, and I'm going to continue to always reiterate over and over again, is with the heel-toe technique, um, there's a starting position. And this is so important when you first learn it. I'll critique so many people. People send me their videos or they'll come for a lesson and they'll be like, what am I doing wrong? And I'll look at what they're doing and like, yeah, you're not starting right. You're starting the technique from here. And if you try and start the technique from here without actually knowing the feeling and what actually has to happen to perform the double stroke, you won't be able to do it. You won't be able to learn it. So it's really going to hinder your learning. So what I always say is start the technique in the toe position. So we'll call it the toe position. And this is with the heel in the air. Okay? And then what happens is you basically come up, you drop down, and then come back up. So that's the motion. Rocking motion. It's not this. Okay, so many people will, uh, will try and do this, and they're like, why is it not working? Why is it not working? Well, you have to do the rocking motion. Now another thing I want to talk about is what you're hearing. You're hearing two strokes. You're hearing one when my heel hits, and you're hearing another when my toe goes back to the starting position. Now when we get to the pedal later, you're going to see that it's actually more of a toe-toe stroke when you slow down and look at the motion. When I hit my heel, I actually will hit the heel on the footboard and not actually on the pedal. The first heel hit won't actually create any stroke, but it is the start of the motion and it is necessary to perform the heel-toe technique, double stroke. And then when I come up, there's my first double, and when I finish, there's my second double. And it works like that. Like I know it's hard to see now, but I really wanted to break it down without the pedal. So if you didn't necessarily have a pedal right now, or you know, if you're sitting on the bus later, if you're watching a movie or whatever, you could literally just sit there and practice this technique. Because it's all about your muscles memorizing this motion. All right, now let's bring the bass drum pedal back in and I'm gonna show you how it looks on the pedal. All right, so now we're back here with the pedal and I wanna show you how the heel-toe technique looks when played on the pedal. So here we go. Okay, so you're gonna notice some differences and differences in, in the feeling, obviously, because we're not on a completely flat carpet. Now the pedal is slightly angled, as you can see here. So now when your foot sits up, it's just different. That's why um, when first starting, because we're going from the carpet, let's flatten that out. And let's just leave the beater on the drum head. So the beater's on the drum head, my foot is in the starting position. Here I do it slowly. I come down, my heel hits, I come, start coming back up, there's the first stroke, my heel is still coming up, there's the second stroke, back in the starting position. I'm doing it as slow as I possibly can. Um, you'll never ever actually play it that slow, that's actually ridiculous. Um, but that's how it actually looks. Let me do it again for you guys. All right, now I'm gonna play it at normal speed for you and then we can slow it down for you in the in video and show you exactly how it sounds and looks super slow motion
Okay, now that you've learned the heel toe technique and you can play a quick double, what I want you to work on is playing it continuously. So just doing like kind of a gallop. Pick a tempo you're comfortable with. No need to use a metronome right now. If um, Just go really slow if that's the way it's working for you. Or with some people, I know it's easier for them to learn this technique at a little bit faster speed just because of the motion with the foot. And then they actually will um, learn how to control it and bring the tempo down later. Which is, there's nothing wrong with that uh, when we're first learning this. As long as you learn it at a variety of tempos, I think that's what's most important. So let's just work on it and let's try and get that gallop going. Okay, so you'll notice when I'm doing that gallop, I don't actually come up and sit there in the starting position every time. But when it's slowed down, you'll see that every time I do the double, I end up back here. And it's just for a split second when you have to do it over and over again. So now I want to talk about a couple of misconceptions about the heel-toe technique. The first one is foot size and footwear. So let me put my shoe back on and I'll be back with you in a second. I am a size 11 and a half foot. So if you can see here on the pedal, when my foot is right at the top, okay, here's the pedal stop. My foot is right at the top, a little bit is hanging off the back. And so a lot of people think that in order to do the heel-toe technique, you need to hit the heel and do this. So you have to have long board pedals. Um, I, I purposely didn't use long board pedals for this demonstration because I wanted you guys to see that that's not the case. You don't need longboard pedals. And I have a size 11 and a half foot, which is probably pretty average for guys, or maybe above average. Um, but it doesn't matter. I can still perform the heel toe technique. Here we go. Now, even if I move my foot down, now watch this. I'm only using, I'm only using this much of the pedal. Okay? My foot. Now I'm going to still play the technique. Okay, so foot size doesn't matter. Even if you had size 15 feet there and your foot was hanging way off the back of the footboard, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about, I'm going to do a little bit of a unique demonstration here, is I want to talk about footwear. Um, and kind of we're going to meld in some of the foot size stuff in here. Basically, I'm going to rotate between a bunch of different types of footwear. I'm going to rotate between um, snowboard boots, work boots, like big cat heavy work boots, um, a pair of size 13, these 13 Velcro shoes, they're huge, and golf shoes, and <laughs> these shoes as well. Just to kind of give you guys a demo, have a little fun, and show you that it doesn't really matter what type of footwear you have, you guys can play this technique. So here we go. We're going to start off with just regular shoes. Next, we have golf shoes. Now we're going to jump to a real ugly pair of shoes that I had to buy. Next, we have a pair of cat work boots. And finally, we're going to jump to a pair of snowboard boots. Alright, so I hope I proved my point there. Footwear doesn't really make a big difference. You can play in gum boots if you want. 